In this video, we're going to look at the choice of basic value encoding object for the type of relationship that we want to depict in our visualizations on our dashboard or in our reports. We have four different types. The first one being uh, points in which you place your points as they appear in your data. The second one is a line chart. Here, your data points are connected using lines. The third type is a bar chart like this, where you can see that on the x-axis, you have your data grouped. Then the fourth type, as you can see here, is boxes. And this could, for example, be like this one, which is a box and whiskers plot, which also tells you something about the spread and the skewness of your data. Now let's move on to the types of relationships. The most uninteresting comparison of relationships is the nominal one. You will often find those in data warehouses when you're comparing uh, one product category to another. And in this example, I have a uh, color. So let's see here now products of different colors. And you have yellow here, and you have blue here, and blue, and blue. And actually, I also have some red, so I'll just make room for those. So I have red here. And for these types of relationships, as you can almost see from my depiction here, one of the things that works really well is the bar charts. You may also want to use points because that could work as well, but it's a much better graphical representation when you put it in bar chart. Uh, the box plot and the lines do not work at all. And the reason that the lines don't work is that if you connect these and run a line through them, then you're implicitly saying that there is something in between red and blue. And while the colors do match, think of them as product categories, then you can't really have one and a half of a product category. So for a nominal comparisons, definitely go with the bar chart. If we look at the sales in Northwind, we have a relationship type that is time series. As we can see here, the bar chart type value encoding object works for time series. However, this way of depicting a time series from top to bottom is not the best way. If we switch the time series so that we read it from left to right, it improves significantly. The reason for this is that we are used to reading from left to right. In this chart, it's easier for you to see that the sales have been increasing throughout the years that it was before. However, if we want to improve it even further, we can switch it into a line chart type. This you can see in this example. And here, it's easier for us to understand that the data being depicted is a time series. And this, the reason for this is that the lines give an impression of continuity. So we know that the half month of November has passed. Approximately half of the sales will have been, been sold. So we can infer data points that are in between in a continuous time series. This slide shows the suggested value encoding object for the type of relationship, according to Stephen Few in his books, Show Me by Numbers. So how do you know what relationship to depict? Stephen Few suggests listening to the words that the business people use. So for time series, look for words such as change, rise, increase, fluctuate, grow, decline, decrease, or trend. For a ranking type, look for words that are larger than, smaller than, equal to, greater than, or less than. For a part to whole comparison, look for words such as rate or rate of total, percent or percentage of totals, share or accounts for X percent. For a deviation, Look for words such as plus or minus, variance, difference to, relative to. For distribution, look for words such as frequency, distribution, range, concentration, normal curve, normal distribution or bell curve. For correlation, listen for words such as increase with, 
decrease with, changes with, varies with, caused by, affected by, or follows. If you want to know about the other uh, relationship types, I suggest that you pick up a copy of Stephen, book, Stephen Few's book, Show Me the Numbers.